Shanghai GDG is a very interesting uh, developer community. I'm glad somebody has asked this question. I mean, this is where the magic happens. This is primarily a question and answer show. So if any of you out there would like to ask questions. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's Google Maps Developers Office Hours. Uh, I'm Paul Saxman, and uh, with me this week is somebody you probably recognize, but uh, hasn't been around for a few weeks, uh, Mano sure. Marks. Uh, what have you been up to, Mano? I got married, you got and married. I went on my honeymoon, so very exciting. Spent a month in Italy. I'll post pictures soon. Not awesome. that anybody here cares, but anyway. Yeah, it was a great time. It was a great time. Oh, I care. Paul's been uh, holding down the fort here for us uh, this summer as a bunch of us take uh, our honeymoons and vacations. So uh, okay. thanks, Paul, for doing that. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, and my and he's coming. new to our team. I guess he, he, regular viewers will, will know him, uh, know that he recently joined uh, the Google Maps team. So we're really happy to have him on board. Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, happy to be here. It's a lot of fun uh, working back in data. Some of you might recognize me from uh, Google TV, which it's also a really great product and uh, a really fun product at Google. But uh, yeah, likewise, this is uh, likewise pretty exciting and fun. So um, you know, I keep thinking like being Google Maps team. You know, we should probably have like one of these uh, like where in the world is Google Maps developer <laughs> relations? You know, because we we tend to kind of move around for for talks and stuff and things like honeymoons in Italy and that would have been even better last year when. Um, we were spending so much time. I was on the road 50% of the time, and we did 100 presentations. Actually, 100 events, more than 100 presentations last year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so so we'll look into that, okay. um, following the Carmen San Diego, San Diego theme, maybe. Um, so today, we, we have two big topics we're going to talk about. One is the, uh, the Google Places API Developer Challenge, and the other one is, is actually something that uh, we presented at Google I.O., but Man is going to go into a little more detail on. That's the um, Google Maps API um, symbols and heat maps. So um, Man has some great examples that we're going to show and uh, kind of pique your guys' interest, hopefully. Um, it's kind of uh, similar to what we, we presented uh, a couple weeks ago wh when Brendan, uh, Brendan Kenny was on, except uh, this doesn't use WebGL. This is just using uh, overlays, correct? Uh, right. Overlays it's, a, it's something that's integrated directly with the um, with the API. So, uh, yeah, we'll get a little bit more into that. But why don't we start with the um, the Places API Developer Challenge? Great. Yeah. So the uh, so if you guys haven't seen it yet, uh, this last week we we announced that we're holding a uh, Google Places API Developer Challenge. Uh, we're kind of inviting developers around the world to actually um, work with local mun municipalities, cities, and communities uh, to develop apps that actually solve problems in kind of the local areas. Mm -hmm. um, and th these use the Google Places API. So that's kind of part of the criteria is, is find interesting ways to use the API um, to kind of help support your, your municipality. Why don't we show the uh, challenge page um, uh, yeah. to everybody on the live stream? I'm going to steal the mouse from you, Mano. So, um, oops, can you maybe zoom in a little bit? Uh, you can use the, uh, the scroll wheel to do that, can you? Or no, uh, or, sorry. There we go. Um, he's just playing a video game this morning. So. <laughs> um, oops, uh, now that's right. the uh, uh -oh, technical difficulties. There we go. All right, now how do we get out of this uh, mirror mode? This is a Windows thing. All right. Well, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go with that for now. <laughs> a little distracting right. for some of you, but um, so th this is the challenge website, uh, as you can see here. Let's get rid of that. Uh, there yeah. we go. Nice. Um, so the website is developers.google.com/places/challenge. Uh, all the information that you need to know about the challenge is there, including the registration forms. We'll post the links to after the um, after this uh, live stream. Yep, absolutely. Um, so we have some videos to kind of uh, kind of explain the uh, explain the challenge to you. A lot of uh, information on the site in general about it. Um, but what you're going to want to check out. So there's a few things that are really important here. Uh, one is the time frame. So it's it's actually a pretty uh, pretty long time frame. The judging doesn't start actually until uh, November first. So actually the uh, the challenge ends October thirty first. Right. Um, so that's, I believe that's about, uh, what, I think 10 weeks uh, from about now, or maybe August 15th, um, when submission begins. 
So um, it give, lo gives developers a lot of time to kind of work out their ideas, uh, kind of put their uh, submit their applications and uh, get them judged. And tell them what they get. Yeah, that's the uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of the uh, probably most important part to some people. Um, so over on the prizes page, what you could see, so we, there's two different uh, judging categories. There's the, mm -hmm. the judges' choice award, uh, which is actually um, you know, obviously determined by the judges, or the winners are determined by the judges. There's also a People's Choice Award. And so um, it's important for you guys to kind of spread the word. If you're developing an app, spread the word to people you know so that they can uh, get in there and we'll judge you on your app. Yeah. <laughs> um, We're not going to do a toll call that you have to, you know, to know 900 numbers or no, absolutely. whatever <laughs> people are doing these days for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, spread the, spread the wealth. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so there's uh, two Google I/O. Um, two Google I/O tickets are actually part of the uh, the Judges Choice Award, and um, also there's a, a travel stipend as well. So, mm -hmm. um, so it'll get you uh, get you two I/O, and I think that's more than enough for a hotel in San Francisco. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, to tell you the truth, I haven't stayed in a hotel in San Francisco <laughs> for a little while, but. Um, that's true. You know, and the, another great thing about this is you, you, it's a chance to get some notoriety. You get to actually uh, to showcase your app, potentially showcase your app at Google I/O 2013. And um, I mean, this is this is well worth it right here. Dinner with the Google Maps and Places API team, so mm -hmm. you can uh, hang out with potentially hang out with us. Um, That's right. Some of the organizers, potentially some of the judges. Um, and we eat well. Yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, so runners up, uh, runners up also have some really great prizes as well. Um, we have Google Nexus Seven tablets, uh, fifteen minute hangouts with a Google executive to be determined, and um, People Choice Award. I, I think it's equally as as compelling. I think it's well, pretty much yeah, the same as the, the judges same. award. Yeah. Um, two I/O tickets, three hundred thirty five hundred, uh, three thousand five hundred travel stipend, and uh, showcasing your app at I/O and. And dinner as well. So a total of six entries can, um, I guess. Uh, sorry. Uh, so we have uh, seven entries. So three, uh, three judges' choice awards, one people's choice award will win the top prize, and then three runners up will get the the Nexus tablet and the hangout with the Google executive. So, all right. Um, so yeah. over on the rules, I'm uh, I'm not going to read this to you guys online, but uh, it's pretty long, and I, I think it's pretty important just to. to Kind of get your get an idea of what uh, what the application entails. Um, you know, big thing here is it is it must use municipal data or city or community mm -hmm. data, it, and it must use the places API. Um, you know, a lot of information about uh, prizes, privacy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Judging oh team size. Um, you know, it can be an individual pro project as well. Um, so if you want to uh, use those. Two tickets to bring your uh, significant other to Google I/O. You can do that as well. That's right. Um, entering the, uh, en you know, entering is just a, a simple form. Uh, this gets you on the list, gets you uh, information updates, and uh, another really important thing on the site here: are the resources. So um, here's where we're actually posting. Um, well, not only information about the Google Places API, which is you know spread out through our de developer, do developer documentation. Um, but here, here's a list of data sources, and we're going to continue to add more data sources. Um, actually, we're going to add more, hopefully this week and uh, throughout the duration of the challenge. So uh, keep your eye on this page if uh, maybe your city's not listed, um, and definitely feel free to you know send information our way if you think there's data sources that we could uh, should potentially post up here. Um, and this is an international, like I said, international um, challenge. So uh, these countries. Uh, anybody in these countries are, is welcome to participate, and a number of other countries. And this was one thing that, uh, oh yeah, that was interesting um, in the rules. Of course, you know, we have, there's a few countries that aren't uh, aren't able to participate and uh, listed up at the top here, but it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Um, and the fact at the bottom here, um, you know, keep giving us your questions, and we'll uh, keep this updated for the rest of the community. So. And of course, you can always ask questions in our regular office hours or um, on Stack Overflow uh, about uh, about particulars uh, of using the Places API. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we're, we're getting a good number of uh, questions these days about Places API and Stack Overflow. Um, I I monitor it every day, and there's a few other team members that do. So uh, so definitely, if you have any questions, uh, 
you know, obviously search Stack Overflow because uh, your question might have been answered already. What's your uh, uh, Stack Overflow score? Oh, uh, not even close <laughs> here. <is it>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've you know I, I've actually been a Stack Overflow user for I think, geez, like quite a few years since I think mm. around 2007 or something like that. But mm. my my score was pretty level for mm. quite a long time. So it's only in the last year or two. But I, I, I think I saw yours, which is uh, I, impressive. Yeah. <laughs> What's great about Stack Overflow is your score can grow as people. I was on, on my honeymoon. I came back from my honeymoon and had grown like 100 points because people found my old answers and, not, and upvoted them. But anyway, <laughs> enough about that. So um, yeah. yeah, anything more on the? Developer challenge? Um, no, I think that's it. You know, maybe in a week or two, we could we could have somebody, um, you know, one of the uh, organizers of the project or mm -hmm. the, the challenge. Um, so we, there's a yeah, from can our marketing come on and team. answer some questions about yeah. specifically about the challenge. Yeah, yeah, and um, besides that, yeah, just just let us know any questions you guys have, any ideas. Um, you know, we're happy to communicate with you guys over Google Plus Stack Overflow. Um, right. So we're looking forward okay. to seeing what you guys put together. OK. Um, on to, let's give the mouse back to you. OK. So um, there was a great session at Google I.O. called uh, Spatial Data Visualization. And I, and I gather that uh, Brendan was on a couple weeks ago and did a, a great job talking about some of the WebGL intricacies and the, the amazing things that you can do with WebGL. Um, for those of you who don't want to quite go that far, um, and you might be interested in our new heat map and symbols uh, 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 services and APIs in the uh, uh, in the Google Maps API. So uh, we're pretty excited about this. So um, what is a, a heat map, though? Um, I, often when I talk about heat maps, people immediately assume I'm talking about temperature. And no matter how much I uh, I talk about other things, they just can't get the word heat map out of their 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 mind. So. A, a, a way to think of this is intensity maps. It's, it's really trying to show intensity of, um, of objects at a location or things at a location, data points. Uh, so here's a, an example. This is uh, intensity of, um, of airports around the world. And the reason they're called heat maps is because they use, um, they use a color scheme often, not always, but often that, um, that we are familiar with from weather forecasts for heat. So you know. Uh, red is is hot, so lots of intensity there, lots of things there. Um, yellow is less hot, and then green is uh, is even more so. And this uh, this one actually shows. You can see here it's mostly yellow and green around the world. But as I zoom out, you can see that the uh, the intensity changes, and you can see the concentration changes because as I, I zoom out, the the areas that are rep, uh, represented are smaller. Uh, so you see that here you get some uh, some deep red areas. So this is just using the Google Maps API, and uh, it uses the visualization library, which you can add uh, very easily. Um, to uh, you just add it as a parameter in the in the loader, and then you just add data. And it's just you know the more points uh, that you add to the heat map at a particular location, the more uh, the more there are uh, there. So I, I was kind of amazed. I was I was playing around with the. Uh, the, it's a heat map overlay, right? Mm -hmm. You get an overlay object that you can put over your map. And uh, how easy it was to actually load data. Right. Um, so I was thinking, like, oh, I'm going to have to, you know, like process or parse a CSV file, or I was going to mm -hmm. have to, you know, get data, you know, load it from, you know, some ugly format into the, the API and actually, um, you know, load it, parse it and load it into the, uh, the, the overlay. Right. And uh, no, it was it was a lot easier than that. I just yeah. had to have a JSON file that had all the data loaded into it. That's right. Um, making a JSON file was really simple. Um, then all you do is you load the JSON file as a script, right? Mm -hmm. And that actually, so since it is JSON is JavaScript, you can tell I come from a Java background because <laughs> I, I have to parse everything in Java. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you 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 know bring the. Uh, you know, load the JSON file into the script. It loads it as data, and then that data is just passed directly as an object to your the, the overlay. So that's right. So no parsing that's right. necessary as long as you have the the JSON file in the first place. And there's a lot of different options you can use. So you can control, for instance, um, you can see this changes as I zoom in and zoom out. Um, but sometimes you want that to stay the same. So if I if I go to this next one, this is the the same example. You see, as I zoom in and zoom out, it actually retains the same color values. And that's useful, because as you're zooming in, 
say I, I zoom in on Vancouver on this other example, you'll see it kind of spreads out, and then suddenly you, you've lost the heat map as you get really close. Um, and that's useful in some cases, but in other cases you want to retain that area of high intensity uh, in, on the map. You can also control things like color. Uh, and this is an interesting example where the, we use both styled maps and uh, the changing the color of the, the heat map. So you can see that it's, it uses a slightly different color scheme and uh, made all the water black. So, yeah. um, And um, you can use it, of course, on a variety of different, uh, you can use it on top of satellites or uh, satellite view, regular maps, hybrid view, any, uh, anything that we have or your own custom maps. We, you can uh, sort of toggle them on and off. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, uh, I think the really cool, so compared to what Brendan showed a couple weeks ago with mm -hmm. the, the WebGL, which is a is very powerful tool, but then you, you do a lot of WebGL programming. I right. mean, you're responsible for actually doing the rendering yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, what does the code look like here? I mean, what, uh, oh, that's a really what good is question. necessary on let's the developer uh, side? Let's take a look at, um, let's view the source here. The control sequence. <laughs> right. There we go. Uh, so standard, um, standard loader, you see you add this libraries equals visualization. Here we're loading in um, a JSON object. And here they just, he was, uh, whoever created this sample, which was actually, it was Enoch uh, who uh, presented this at Google I.O., um, put in polygons to cover up the oceans because that's his favorite way of doing that. So then uh, here's your standard creating your map code. Um, here's uh, you create a, a new data object, um, this MVC array, and then you pass it to the heat map layer, and then you um, you just add data points to the heat map layer, and that's it. Yeah, so it's, it's so like, it's really simple. I mean, to, to actually get the heat map overlay, you're looking at seven, eight lines of code. Right. Right. Yeah, and this is all done. It's important to emphasize this is all done client side. Right? This is all loaded into the browser. So nothing, um, we don't get, that data doesn't get to sent to Google and then generating an overlay and then sent back, which is what we did uh, with the uh, Fusion Tables layer. So Fusion right. Tables had a, a great heat map functionality that a lot of people like. It has that functionality. And that still remains an option to you. But um, if you can do it in um, client side, this actually makes a I think a smoother transition and a more dynamic one. Mm -hmm. If you take a look here at this example, as I said, you can toggle on and off the heat map. But you can also change the gradient, so you can change the colors. Um, you can change the radius of the, the points, and you can change the opacity. Uh, and, and a lot of other options mm -hmm. as well. So uh, you get a lot of dynamism because it happens in the client and doesn't have to go back to the server to regenerate something. Mm -hmm. So how might, I mean, so I, I can definitely see the kind of the scientific application of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're analyzing a certain data set and you want to see it on a map, you know. Sure. Um, but how might, you know, like, a, how might you integrate this into, a, like, a Web 2.0 app? Like, what are some good use cases for using heat maps in, in a non-scientific application? Well, so um, this, uh, this is an interesting data set. This is, uh, you know, taxi rides in, um, in, uh, San Francisco. So that might be something that you could use uh, to demonstrate to your customers where um, where there's an intensity of uh, of location. So you can see there's a there's a lot of taxis. Say this say this data set was taxis where the taxis are right now. So if I wanted to go find a taxi, I would go down there or a cafe or some other thing. You know, you could show where restaurants were or something like that. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a lot of um, a lot of potential there. So, you know, if I'm if I want to go out on a Saturday night and I want to see where things are, not necessarily want to go to a particular restaurant, but I want to go to a neighborhood and just like hang out, go to a bar, go to a restaurant and just like get a sense of that neighborhood, that would give me a sense of of which neighborhoods to uh, to attend if I'm for instance using Google Places to find uh, to find those. Yeah, very cool. So so yeah, so I mean that's a, a good point. Is I think a lot of a lot of municipal data actually is kind of neighborhood, street by street, neighborhood by neighborhood. Right. So you can right. potentially use the heat maps to kind of 
you know, show show certain things about certain streets, neighborhoods, right. uh, areas of the city. So, and then of course, cool. crime statistics, another classic example of using heat mm -hmm. maps or uh, you know demographic data. And then my next one's going to be s like cafe density because I'm always looking for uh, <laughs> right <laughs> for good places to hang out on the weekends when you know not busy. You know, so you need a laptop. This next sample actually shows how the dynamism of the heat map layer, which is that I can actually, this is basically every time I move the mouse, it's creating a new point. And um, that allows me to just sort of track the movements, and the areas in which somebody is, uh, is going on this map. This is actually not a map that's particularly useful, but it does show how the heat map can just, as you're getting data, you can just keep adding it to it uh, based on user input, or you can, uh, you know, more stuff being loaded from your server side. Right. Yeah, exactly, because it is, it is JSON, so you can just dynamically, constantly just make Exactly. Make yeah. requests. In response request. to an event, just add. And you see, if I um, just hover over this one point and just add a whole bunch of points, it actually starts to affect the um, the rem the rest of the heat map, um, and you start to see some shrinkage in the uh, the intensity in other areas. So, I think that's a that's a really fun and interesting example. Very cool. So I think we're going to switch gears here and start talking about uh, symbols. So symbols um, is a new uh, addition to uh, to polylines and markers in uh, in the Google Maps API. And the idea here is that um, you know, for a long time you've been able to do custom markers in the Maps API. You can use your own icon for the marker. However, um, doing custom lines really wasn't, uh, wasn't that useful. And loading in mar the custom markers, you were loading in an image, a particular image that was, that was reused. Um, so symbols now allows you to use SVG, scalable vector graphics, to change how both lines and um, and markers look and are and are represented, and this gives you a lot of dynamism. So we we've we've built in some default styles. Um, so th this is actually in response to a lot of requests that we we've gotten over the years for this kind of thing. Um, you see here uh, the this line is actually an arrow. So this is um, just a simple polyline, right? It's a simple polyline um, styled as an arrow, and this is one of our default styles. Uh, this is another one, uh, um, a, uh, a dashed line. Often, very common request that we just, we never um, accommodated before, but we do, uh, we do believe with the, the spread of support for SVG and, um, and Canvas and other technologies that we Used to implement this, we have we can now um, we can now do this. And, and again, since this is this is a polyline, this is client side again, right? So yeah, it's all being rendered client side. So That's you uh, so you as a developer, you provide some kind of you either say like what you want the line to look like using one of our pre-canned styles, mm -hmm. or you can provide SVG parameters. That's right. Um, so this, for instance, um, see, there's a little happy face, a little X, a little dot at the end. You get uh, quite a bit of control over over this, and this is all done by SVG that's just defined in the page. Actually, let's take a look at the source on that one. So you see here, it's um, I'm it's zoom a little bit. yeah. Thank you. Help me too. <laughs> um, so you see here, standard map loading, um, and then you create a line. And this just has two points on it. And then you create uh, different symbols using um, SVG. Uh, and you know, symbol one, symbol two, symbol three. And then um, with the line, you, you create this new polyline. You give it the path, the line coordinates. And then you put in these icons. And you have a number, there's a number of different things you can do on here. You can uh, change, you can put in the offset. And the offset can either be a, a percentage or, um, a, or a pixel value. And that allows you to, to define where on the line something shows up. Now this, is a, this brings an interesting point uh, and why we used SVG. SVG is scalable vector graphics. Um, if you were to use icons and you were to do something like this, uh, zoom in, it would distort. The, the icon would eventually be distorted. 
mm. right? Or it would get too small if you zoomed out. But because it's using SVG, you can um, it scales. It's you're just defining where the vectors are, so it scales so that um, you get a nice clean representation each time. Right, and also, uh, so I think it was. Well, maybe let's see what your next tab is. Are you going to uh, markers or? Um, I oh, okay. was this going to was animation. Yeah. Okay. So because uh, again, because it's it's SVG, but it's all happening in the client, we can do things like alter the offsets, and so you can just have a little timed thing that alters the offset, and it it actually moves it around. Uh, so this is a you know, uh, let's take a look at the source for this. So you know, again, line, uh, uh, symbol, polyline, and uh, the offset as it starts at at 100 percent, which means it starts at the end of uh, of the line, and then it just has a function animate circle, which moves that circle. Um, you know, every count it uh, it moves that circle a little bit, uh, offsets it, changes the offset, and then it just keeps running. So. Animate circle just keeps uh, keeps looping around, so very simple uh, to do. Really interesting animations. Yeah, yeah. So all it needs, you, you just have to to modify the the variable on the off, on the the symbol to actually get it to, or on the polyline actually to get it to. That's right. Very cool. So this uh, this sample actually takes advantage of our. Um, of our elevation API, and an elevation uh, uh, service, or rather, the elevation service allows you to say, "Give me all the elevations along a path um, at so many intervals," and this says uh, at 500 every 500 meters, and so then um, we create a new line that goes sort of off that, uh, off the. Well, this is actually a good example. I'm going to zoom in. You can see there's actually individual lines here. And then each line, the length of the line, is by the height of the um, of the elevation at that point. And then you'll see that there's a different line that creates sort of a shadow off of it. Mm -hmm. And these lines are all at an angle that was pre -cal was calculated off uh, where it was on the line. So this is kind of a cool visualization for, let's say, if you want to do like a bike riding, like yeah, that would be a really good like that, that would be a really good idea. So yeah, you can put all your data in the visual in the map itself and say oh, exactly. Cool. Yeah. So those are the samples I had. I um, unfortunately wasn't able to to play a video that I've uh, I've got. But uh, what I would suggest if you're uh, you're interested in this, check out the um, the Google I/O presentation that uh, Enoch Lau and Brendan Kenny did. Enoch spent a lot of time talking about these uh, these different details, and then also check out the what's new in um, uh, Google Maps uh, in the Google Maps API session that was done by um, Brian McClendon, Peter Birch, Dylan Lormer, and Tor Mitchell. And Tor Mitchell uh, spend has a really great uh, video where he shows all the planes that are, arrive in and out of. A, uh, out of San Francisco in a given day. Uh, and that video was done using the Maps API and animating. And it actually animates them flying on and off, uh, flying to and from their destinations. So uh, really, uh, really powerful visualization. We'll, uh, we'll post links to both those presentations in, uh, in the uh, Google Maps API page, uh, Google Plus page. So Awesome. So I'm, I'm not over here checking email. I'm uh, bringing up the <laughs> questions. <laughs> right. Okay. So yeah, well, now and now your question. <laughs> so yeah. we're gonna we're going over to Google. Uh, uh, yeah. Moderator. So yeah, we have moderator running. Uh, actually, I think I set the uh, moderator timer to to turn off at 10:30. So so if you have any questions, um, I'm going to go over to the uh, the YouTube live and uh, we'll check the comments there as well. Okay. Um, but uh, we'll start out with what we have in moderator. Uh, we didn't put this up on the, the screen, so yeah, why don't you just go ahead and read the questions then? Sure. So, um, so we're going to try to get the ones that are are either. So, okay, the heat maps layer has uh, presentation options, but once rendered, doesn't seem to have events or interaction options. 
is this true or a misreading of the docs? So in referencing, um, so events or interaction options on heat maps. Um, yeah, so anything that it's going to have on that, uh, on the layer, it, it, it's an MVC object, so it'll inherit some, um, it, whatever other um, layers have, the sort of the basic MVC layer objects have. Um, I actually kind of blanking. I don't think it has an on click event or the standard oh, uh, I see click what events. Saying, yeah. um, but um, you know, I'll have to take a, a closer look at those docs, and maybe we can uh, circle back to that next time. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, we got a couple questions about Google Glass. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> we're probably not going to answer those. Yeah, since, uh, it's not our team, and you know, we so we we're not qualified to answer the Google Glass questions. Uh, especially distribution, um, yeah. but yeah, definitely. I mean, we can. <laughs> we'll see about <laughs> posting something about uh, you know where you guys can find information about that stuff because because right. it might not be uh, widely available yet. And uh, so, so Google Maps navigation. Mm -hmm. um, so, is there an API that will uh, integrate with Google Maps? So, and then we'd love to be able to take users along our routes using Google Turn by Turn. Uh, so that's a really good question, um, and uh, I am n neither of us is on the Android team, so we really probably aren't the most qualified people to to answer that. However, um, I will say that navigation um, doesn't have an API, um, but it does allow you to launch it with an intent. So I would look into uh, what it supports uh, with the intents. I'm not sure if it supports a particular route. Probably yeah. does, but. Um, uh, or, or a particular destination. Um, yeah, uh, so as I said, no API at this point uh, that I know of, but uh, you might want to check out um, the, um, the Android office hours for more information. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we do also have the Google Directions API, so y you can get route information. Um, right, it just doesn't just allow you to do that turn by turn. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it looks like, oh, live comments, here we are. Um, so how can you animate a heat map using a Google Drive table? Uh, can you show some code? Uh, so um, I don't think either of us have any code ready for that. That's a really good question. Um, you would have to um, draw, um, I would imagine, just on the, uh, if you, so Google Drive table, oh, I guess this is a basically a fusion table. Um, so you would you just need to pull it out using pull out your data using the API, create some JSON, and uh, push it into um, into uh, Maps API. So it's it's all about the JSON. Does the uh, yeah. Fusion tables have a export to JSON or a JSON feed interface? You know they released a new API while I was on my honeymoon, <laughs> and <All right>. I <laughs> haven't uh, taken a look at it. So um, yeah, I, unfortunately I don't know. But uh, ask the question on Stack Overflow, and I think we can get some more information. Yeah, I think it's yeah. uh, I think it's fair to mention that you just returned yesterday from your honeymoon. <laughs> yes, so. that was my my first day back. So your uh, email backlog is still probably pretty massive. Uh, looks like that's pretty much it for questions. Um, if you guys have anything, you know, feel free to comment on Google+. Plus. Um, we're going to post the, a link to the, uh, mm -hmm. the recording, um, the right. YouTube recording on a Google Plus stream. So feel free to add comments or questions there. Um, we'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, so, so any feedback you guys have uh, is much appreciated. And uh, I believe next week uh, there's an Australia-friendly time uh, um, office hours. So uh, look, you know. Chris and uh, Luke will look forward to talking to them. Mm -hmm. Yep, we'll make sure that gets posted on the Google Developers Live calendar so you guys can uh, get some advance notice. So um, I think that's everything today. That's uh, it. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us and uh, looking forward to having you guys at a future event. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, good to be back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Mano. Thank you. Mm -hmm.